Greetings fellow Keepers, it's Sonial here with the Keeper's Corner, and I know it's been quite a while since we've uploaded any new videos, but with the onset of the TK Web beta going up for those N Plus users on the Ninja Kiwi website, I wanted to go ahead and get back into the swing of things here and introduce our new players to the community and to the game and give everybody some tips and tricks and things like that to get them started. And I've had a lot of web players showing up on Discord asking for help. Um, specifically in terms of how to spend their money if they're paid players, where to put their hero stars, how to compile their hero teams, and things like that. Um, I'm going to start with one of the common threads that I have noticed in a lot of the newer players, and that is undervaluing a few of the common heroes, uh, particularly the knight here. Um, I spoke to a, a handful of web players who are progressing through the game using the Blackguard or the Warmaster, whoever the higher rarity uh, tank-ish hero that they've attained is. And I do want to just take note with you guys that for most of the game leveling up to the max level, which is currently 55 in the 1.8 version, um, the Knight's going to be your go-to pure tank. He's going to be the guy that is going to typically always have the best defense and best armor rating and pairs that with defensive abilities as well as a taunt um the difference between using the knight as opposed to the blackguard and other heroes without a taunt is of course that sometimes you just absolutely need to protect your healers or your revive heroes or whatever the case may be whether it be in difficult pve content like the weekly special campaigns which we'll cover all that in the future here um or in pvp uh where you're trying to run a team for example that's focused around one damage dealer one support hero one healer and a tank which for example would be the traditional team uh you see a lot at the end game pvp uh tiers which would be the knight the shaman the warmaster and the cleric with the knight being the taunter the shaman being the dps warmaster is the utility and cleric is the healer but in addition to his taunt, um, we do have taunts available on the Samurai and the Templar as well, but neither of them have the defensive abilities paired with them that the Knight has. The Knight has parry, which of course, as you can see here at 7 stars, is going to reduce the incoming damage by 86%, and I will go ahead and start up a new account and get some of these numbers on lower stars and whatnot, because I know a lot of this isn't entirely relevant to you new players in terms of the max hero stats and things like that. Um, but another one that's very valuable on the knight and does give him a little bit of utility as well is the Sunder, which is going to reduce enemy armor. Um, so when facing off against an opposing tank or against a high armor enemy like a vampire lord or something like that, the knight's going to cut down their armor while your DPS hero is getting buffed up by a utility hero and so on and so forth. And another thing is... A lot of people are asking about epic heroes, super rare heroes, which ones to focus on, which ones are good, which ones aren't. Um, typically, you're going to have three go-to epic heroes, two for PvP, which are going to be the Blackguard and the Ranger here. And the Archmage is going to be your go-to for uh, PvE content coming up into the low mid-40s uh, when those epic weapons start becoming available. At level 40, you can net the Rod of Ruin for the Archmage, which we'll look in gear, look at gear a little more in depth in another video here. But it is important to note that the Rod of Ruin and the uh, Wand of Endless Suffering are the two double element weapons. Um, any elemental weapon, whether it be the Frost Spike, the Fist of the Dark One, the Rod of Ruin, the Thunder Staff, they're going to apply the damage of the weapon as element on top of their regular damage. Um, so you're going to get a double element bonus, which means a double damage bonus with any of these double element weapons. Later on, the Warlock kind of surpasses the Archmage in a lot of instances because of her faster skill cooldown and things like that. Um, but at earlier levels, when you're not dealing with these elemental weapons, the Warlock is a little bit underwhelming in terms of damage output. It is important to note that the Valkyrie here is a paid hero. Um, she's going to cost you 2,700 gems or, uh, it's like 25 or $30 American to get her immediately at three stars. And at the end game tiers, uh, 50 to 55 or so, even 45 plus, 
you're going to start running into a lot of opponents wearing epic armor that's going to have high magic resistance on it. And those higher magic resistance heroes are really going to deem heroes like the Valkyrie or the Archmage or the Necromancer, which rely on elemental damage um, pretty moot when it comes to damage output. The fire damage on her, of course, is not going to do very much, or the lightning even, when a hero has 70 resistance to fire or 70% resistance to lightning. That being said, in the earlier brackets... Um, really from about 20 to 42 or so when epic armor starts becoming openly available she can be devastating in pvp and a big part of that is going to be from her on death ability uh we'll have a quick look at that here the not the wrath of fire but the fire of wrath that when she dies or is resurrected, she deals a burst of fire damage. And an instance in which you're going to set that up well in PvP would be running her with the Cleric, the Templar, and a fourth uh, damage-dealing hero. That she's going to get herself killed in the front line, and then you bring her back with the Cleric, and you just keep spamming that AoE blast. And in earlier levels as well, that's going to open you up to using some different gear on her as opposed to the traditional epic setups that you see at the end game builds and the premier idea there is going to be running the forbidden blade here which is going to give her a faster cooldown and faster initiative along with the chain skin and that's going to allow you to speed up her cooldowns enough that she can stack her shield of wrath ability here for bonus damage and we'll get into doing some more detailed looks at each individual high value hero um another one here is the ninja who i personally favor is one of my top heroes um some people are a little indifferent but it's definitely been starting to catch on one of the most important things to note about the ninja is his soul skill the poison smoke bomb can be used in pve and in tower attacks to greatly manipulate the skill cycle of the enemy um what's really cool about it is that the stun is the same duration pretty much regardless of his star level or his hero level so whether he's putting out big damage for you or not at lower levels, you can always make use of that disruption to the skill cycle. But really quickly, um, again, with the super rare heroes, the Shaman and the War Master are going to be your high value heroes. The Cavalier and Kensai uh, have a fairly niche value. I personally had a tremendous amount of success with the Kensai coming up through the mid 30s or so um there are a few starter packs available in the game one is for the samurai one is for the kensai one is for the archmage and each one's going to come with a weapon um the weapon on the kensai the perfect katana is going to be viable throughout most of the game and end game is going to be the premier option for your knight if there are any of those packs that you look at ever purchasing, I would only really suggest the Kensai pack. Otherwise, you're going to want to focus your money elsewhere if you're a paid player. Um, it is important to note that a few of these uncommon heroes can have some tremendous value early on. The Paladin, especially because of his ability to boost all of your team's defense, and that will help make up the difference when you're not wearing high-level armor, or epic armor, and things like that. And he does that with his Holy Shield and his Bless ability, which gives bonus health. And in our rare heroes, um, it's definitely worth mentioning that the Spell Sword probably has the most longevity of any of these heroes. He's going to be a high-value hero to you throughout um, your 30s, 40s, and 50s in PvP. And has some niche value in PvE and whatnot. The Druid is going to be a core hero for you in PvE with some limited value in PvP until you're able to basically outgear and outstar her use as a healer. The Barbarian and the Samurai. Uh, the Barbarian fills a DPS role in a lot of teams. She has a tremendous ability to do true damage and boost her uh, personal damage rating by a percentage base. Uh, typically, any percent-based stat or damage increases like we see on the Shaman with his passive boost to attack rating. The Monk has a passive boost to attack and defense. Those percent-based abilities are always going to give the highest return as opposed to a fixed-rate um, numbered skill value. 
But the Barbarian also uh, is one of the heroes that has an epic available to her, uh, has one of the first, or the first epic available to her, the Ambusher's Hacker, available at level 37, and it is tremendously cheap to craft those um, at only three Void Cores, about 130,000 gold at the level you unlock it. You are definitely going to be wanting to craft three or four of those ambushers hackers in the long run. The samurai, as we mentioned briefly before, does have a taunt. Um, he's not quite strong enough to be a frontline tank like the knight or the blackguard or the ranger, um, but he is tremendously valuable in the right situations as a wing taunt or a backline taunt, where he's going to suck up the ranged attacks of your enemies and allow the frontline hero to only have to worry about melee attacks. In addition to his ability to taunt, he also has an AoE debuff to the enemy's attack rating, which can also help you to survive uh, high damage output teams and level the playing field against better geared opponents. And in terms of our other uncommon heroes, it's important to mention that the Pirate and the Sorceress are both boost heroes. The Pirate will boost gold, the Sorceress will boost training points. Um, if you look at some of our previous videos, you will see that there's some focus on using gold boost teams, which is consisting of the pirate, the cleric, the thief, and my personal choice is usually the archmage up front with a tank setup. The berserker can also do well, as well as any other hero that can both damage and tank at the same time. Um, when we get into our common heroes, though, it's important to note that the mystic and the cleric are going to be your other two heroes other than the knight that have the longevity to last into level 50. The thief is going to have some fair DPS value in PvP and even in PvE up into about the high 30s, um, at which point he's going to really be offset by a number of other heroes. The mystic doesn't have as much value early on as she does late. Um, later in the game, she's tremendously valuable for her ability to add dodge percentage, to rapidly disenchant or cleanse debuffs from your own heroes, and, of course, to put out that powerful Doom soul skill. And the Cleric is going to be our single target healer, uh, cleanser, and reviver for any sort of sustained teams or anybody that needs the support of a healer doesn't quite have the damage to take out their opponents right away. Um, while we're looking at these guys, too, it's important to note for the tower defense um, scene or whatever you want to call it, the... Berserker has become the most popular tower defender, and that is, of course, only using his epic weapon. Earlier on, he doesn't quite do enough damage to be pervasive in towers. He's going to usually be followed by the Warlock and the Ninja in terms of high value as tower defenders. But earlier on, it's going to be really based on what machines and things you're able to build and use in your towers. But that's just a quick look at the... Um, few heroes and whatnot that you guys are going to want to focus on as you're coming up. And as for the people who've asked, what should they spend money on and things like that, um, you're always going to want to look at these hero packs. Uh, these hero packs are going to be really your highest return for any investment that you make in the game. They're going to give you 40 soul stones. Um, you don't want to just go buying them all willy-nilly for heroes like the Archer or the Swashbuckler. You really only want to focus on your high-value epic heroes, uh, the Blackguard, the Ranger, your high-value super rare heroes like the Shaman, the War Master. Um, having one to three heroes that are starred above your level bracket, say you're in the mid-20s and you have two five-star and one six-star hero, that's going to basically almost guarantee that you're going to dominate most of the competition in your level range. And later on, it's going to be one of the what routes for you to becoming as strong as possible, as fast as possible. It's also very important to note that once you achieve seven stars, which is the max star level for a hero, whenever you collect additional stones for them past that seventh star, you're going to get one quarter of their hero shop value converted to gold, which means you're going to get 6250 gold for the epic heroes. You're going to get 2500 from your rare, 1250 or from your super rare rather, 1250 from your rare, 250 from your uncommons, and 125 from your commons, which after you hit those seven stars is going to be tremendously valuable. But again, that's just a quick look at a few of the basics. We're going to come back and have a look at some of the campaign options, some PvP teams, and uh, some crafting basics for all of you new web players. And of course, we graciously welcome you all to the Tower Keepers community. If you guys haven't yet, you're going to want to head over to the TowerKeepersHQ.com website. 
they're going to have a link there to the Tower Keepers Discord server where you can hop on. Um, there's a number of different guilds and community members present. There are players who have been with the game since the local New Zealand launch all the way back in September of last year. Um, so there's a, a definitely a dearth of knowledge and people on that server to help you guys out as you're getting acclimated to this community. And of course, if you haven't yet, you're going to want to make sure you subscribe to the Keeper's Corner so you can catch any of our new videos as they come out. And like, comment, subscribe, all that jazz. We will catch you guys on the next one.